Yoruba Popular Theater, which is believed to have its beginnings rooted in the political intrigues of the Oyo Empire, is said to have started in the 16th century. Although the Yoruba Popular Theater, especially the Alarijo category, started for the sole purpose of court entertainment, it became a means through which Nigerian theater artists and playwrights influenced public opinion on many cultural and social issues for the development of the society. However, the 21st century has experienced a serious decline in the activities of the Yoruba popular traveling theater, which popularized the likes of Duro Ladipo, Babasala, and Hubert Ogunde, just to mention a few. In today's edition of Third Eye, Professor Bakari Ujorosaki believes that resuscitating the Yoruba popular traveling theater is necessary for the development of the Nigerian society in Africa as a continent. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Professor Bakari Ujurosaki to Third Eye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Yoruba popular traveling theater. To some people who are just hearing it for the first time, what will you say is Yoruba popular traveling theater? Yeah. Thank you, Ozi. Yoruba popular uh, traveling theater movement was a the kind of theater practice uh, that took practitioners, professional practitioners, and their troops and their cast and crew from one place to another, performing for different kinds of audiences. But more importantly, it was a commercial thing. It was commercially oriented. Their audience paid at the gates, bought tickets at the gates, mm. before gaining entrance into the performance venues and uh, watch the performances. And from this, those practitioners made money mm. and lived a decent life. Mm. Okay? But at the advent of the home video thing, this um, practice collapsed mm. for a combination of reasons. Mm. And today, the, the talents uh, in the industry are merely waking up in the morning and waiting till when um, a wealthy man has money to sponsor you know a movie production before they are engaged mm. meanwhile from the survey we have done uh, people are still waiting for them people still want to watch those uh, stage performances live mm. theater performances uh, but you know, there are a few people giving those offerings, mm. which is why uh, I'm now collaborating with um, some of those um, practitioners for the resuscitation and the revival of this um, mm. practice. Because um, uh, first and foremost, it is a means of creating jobs mm. for the Timmy population of uh, jobless youth, okay. especially those who have studied theater, performing, or dramatic arts, and those who have even studied um, um, other courses in the universities or higher institutions, but have talents, hmm. okay, to practice um, um, music, drama, or dance. Okay, um, Prof, when you say it was the advent of um, the home video, that's um, the home video industry in Nigeria that gave birth to the decline of the activities of the Yoruba popular traveling theater. Um, some school of thought, uh, they have this understanding that it was the same Yoruba traveling uh, popular theater actors and actresses that also decided to shift from that to the home video. That is correct. So when they were doing that, uh, don't you think in their mindset, they believe that they can make it bigger here? So for that reason, let us discard this other one. Yes, the video thing came as an alternative. And they felt it was easier. And we know as professionals that it is easier to make 
a screen uh, performance than a stage performance. Mm. And so they, they found that um, as a better alternative, it was easier to package, cheaper, you know, uh, even faster to come by. Uh, you rehearse a stage production for weeks before it is ready for performance. Uh, this other one, you can, um, you can cook up the story today and in the next four days it is ready uh, for screening and all that. So they got lazy and um, many of them saw it as a better alternative. Mm. Again, like you said, at the beginning they saw it as even a way of um, making it bigger, uh, financially speaking, because um, they had sponsors at the beginning uh, uh, when it started. They had people who brought money into these productions. So they felt that, okay, um, as an actor, um, as a director, as a makeup artist, as a costume designer, you know, I could be on my own and somebody, one big money man calls me to come and just mm. offer my services and I make money without much sweating. And so, they moved away from the stage practice to this new alternative. But decades after that, we can now think back in retrospect mm. and now compare Okay, um, some of them are, are regretting it already mm. because it was possible for them to have uh, moved to the screen but still maintaining the stage mm. practice. Mm. When you were not invited to a, a movie location for a shoot, you are busy with your troupe, traveling from one city, from one town to another, okay, performing on stage. Mm and you're still earning a, a living, you're still making a, a decent living. But now what is happening is that a good number of them are broke, very broke, you know, those practitioners, because sometimes for six, seven months, some of them don't get, you know, uh, invited to, to film locations for any shoot. And for those months, for God's sake, what are you doing? You are just at home, um, um, living on friends, you know, begging for, you know, uh, begging friends to give you, um, uh, step ends to, to keep surviving with and all that. Mm. Because uh, the structure which um, the, the structure they, they had built which um, saw to it that um, they were able to, to move around mm. uh, uh, veritable orders engineering you know, structure they had in place, all of that had collapsed because uh, in fact i, now, I, I, I had, had wanted to ask you about the structure exactly. which means they never had a solid the, the, there was structure. there was a, a structure okay. they had a structure they had uh, a followership okay. and this was well established in 1944 when hubert ogunde started those of them who established their troops after hubert ogunde hmm. followed suit okay okay they adopted the hubert ogunde uh, 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 format and so they had their followership, they had their structure. Those guys were, were good businessmen, good managers, mm. okay? They, they were the, the likes of Dula Dibo, Kola Ogumala, Juma Aliu, Aisho Pepe, Ishola Ogushola, no, Tubo Sodusi, many of them. They had their, their structure in place for the packaging of, the, of their content and for the marketing, you know, of their products. Mm. But given the number of years between when they abandoned the stage for the screen and now, those structures had collapsed. <laughs> the audience engineering they had done, you know, is no longer uh, uh, working. Driver. Okay? But because people are still craving for that past, okay, people have come to realize that no, mat no matter the offerings that you have through the screen, that the feeling is not the same when you watch a live theater performance right on stage. Mm. So there is that craving. And from the survey we have done, and there are things I can, I can mention to you to convey you that people mm. are still waiting for the coming back of these um, uh, stage performances. For instance, if from nowhere the stand-up comedy genre, you know, could start and has become what it has become in Nigeria today. Okay? 
And that's, that's from live theater performance, mm -hmm. you know, the, the stand-up um, uh, uh, comedy genre that we have yeah. today. It's from the live theater performance thing we we're talking about. So if that has developed to the stage, it has developed to today, and you see the kind... Here now, if Ali Baba and his boys announce that um, they are coming to, to your hall mm -hmm. here, and people should pay 10,000 10, naira to come and watch um, a two-hour stand-up um, comedy show, you know what is going to happen. You are perhaps going to start um, asking them to even uh, prepare to have two shows in a day because mm -hmm. the, 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 the place will be filled up. That is a pointer to the fact that people are still looking for live theater performances. Okay. And that wow. is why we are saying that these practitioners and the ones that are coming after them, especially uh, younger ones who are just coming out of the universities and other institutions, you know, who are talented but do not have jobs. Okay. They can team up with um, the, the, some of the old practitioners who are still alive, but they are actually old now, mm. okay? And in, the, in that clip that you showed, you see some of them that I'm working with presently on this resuscitation project. Okay. The likes of Papa Lolo, who is 79, will, will soon be, be 80 years old. Mm. Ajima Jason, who is already 81. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the likes of um, uh, Sam Sinelu Melu, uh, Ojojolu, um, Tuboso Dusi, and, and uh, Mr. Rai, um, uh, uh, Mr. Rai Asumo. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rai Asumo is about uh, 79 also, mm -hmm. you know, now, and, and all that. Okay. Um, uh, Dele Odule and I are collaborating on this project, and we want to make sure that uh, the, uh, that is why you also see in that clips that we have some very young ones who are just getting out of the university and that some are in the university okay we want them to work with these old ones mm -hmm. and see whether okay they can learn from them and then be encouraged into going into the practice of traveling okay. theater Is there no conflict between those who are those who are formally trained, you know, from the university point of view, and the likes that you have mentioned, which I know may probably had had inf uh, an informal training in the aspect of the practice of the theatre? Wouldn't there be any conflict? I don't see any conflict. Uh, I'm working with them. I'm a professor of theatre and dance, and yet I'm working with them. I'm able to work with them. Okay, I, I don't see any conflict. Okay. Uh, the so-called formally trained have a lot to learn from that generation. That's the truth of the matter. They have so much to learn from that generation. Yes, even the old ones too, they have a lot to learn from the younger ones. Okay, but I mean, and that is what we are demonstrating, okay, uh, currently in the project we, we, we are handling, uh, uh, Dele Odule and, uh, and myself. The two can work together because for our dream, to, to come true. The two must agree to work together. The, 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 the old ones who are still, um, who are still living now, uh, but who was part of this Yoruba Traveling Theatre movement, they are too old now. You, you, you heard when I said some of them are, are in their 80s and yeah. late 70s. They no longer have the strength and the energy to push it move from one place to, to the other and practice in our stage, hmm. okay? But the younger ones who still have the strength, they, they, were not, they were not alive then to witness that practice, you know? I was part of that practice. I was that of that movement. That was where I started uh, before going to the university to study theater arts. Uh, I was with Jima Liu, I was with Ray Yumi, and I was with... Um, um, Hubert Ogunde. Okay. And, and so, you if don't have many people like that oh, in okay. this young generation. I saw what those men were doing. Mm. I picked from what they were doing. Mm. And then, by the time I went to the university to study, I was able to influence what I was taught in the classroom in the university. Mm. Okay? With what I had learned from those men that I worked with. And it's, it's working for me. 
can we look at something here, especially from the angle of uh, the origin? Probably, you know, in those days, the contents of their production, that's the synopsis and the things that they interpret on stage that we see, the production aspect sometimes um, is from the angle of being the conscience of the society, whereby what is happening in the society, they are able to replicate it on stage. Yes. And then is informative, is educative, at times it's for protest. Yes. You know, against the government of the day when the government of the day when they are not doing what they are Absolutely. supposed to do. But recently, uh, 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 is that what we are also going to witness with these new generations that you have? Because somehow the aspect of being a conscience of the society is no longer very key and topmost in most of the theater practice in terms of stage productions. You cannot be a successful creative artist when you have nothing to say. Art doesn't just exist for the, for the sake of just existing. Hmm. You must have a message, you must have something to say. Yeah. There must be a content. When you have no content, you, you, you create nothing. Hmm. Historically, one of the things that even led to the demise of uh, live theater uh, 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 performances um, is what we are talking about. The fact that at a point, the content that the younger generation of theater practitioners, the university trained, the content they began to bring for the people to watch were not the kind of things that the, that the people wanted to see. Hmm. The people could not relate to those things. Yes, There was too much experimentation, uh, basic and fragments. Uh, you, you bring a performance, a story about an African, an African community, uh, the king, is there wearing the, the uh, dancer's leotard, uh, black, black leotard, uh, and um, you have some cardboard there, which the audience should imagine is a crown, and you have uh, this character who is supposed to be a king holding a torchlight. And then after three lines, this same character becomes a policeman again. That torchlight becomes a baton. The, the torchlight that was uh, a hostel um, two minutes ago in the same performance. Don't you think and they were trying to maximize the usage of hand props? Well, uh, not, not that. You know, these theories, uh, 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 some will call it grotesque method theater of the poor. Um, then you have Stanislavski the, and co. You have the uh, basic <laughs> and uh, fragments. Uh, it's a way of, like you said, um, semi phones and things like that. But it was deeper than that. Okay? It was deeper than that. They were actually. Uh, imperialistic agenda, mm. I mean, forced on Africa um, um, through the contraption we call globalization. Mm. Okay, um, it, was an, it was a deliberate thing uh, to make sure that um, our identity, you know, disappears. Mm. Um, um, and that's the truth of the matter. But um, uh, our university trained practitioners got fascinated with this new way, new way in quotes, mm. new way of packaging performances. Mm. And they, they fell in love without without reinterrogating those ideas, okay? Without reinterrogating those ideas. And so people will come to the theater to watch Baban and you see things, and one by one, um, the audience uh, abandoned the theater because they could no longer see those masquerades hmm. that um, they will see in the works of Indigenous Hibatu elements. E exactly. They could no longer see their own stories being told on stage, okay? I mean, when you, when you uh, package uh, uh, waiting for Godot, the way it is written, and uh, you put it on stage at the National Theatre, uh, 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 a bucket of Euripides, you, as it is written, you know, in, in the script, you, you package it and put it on stage in the theatre. Um, you are already defining your audience, you are already defining the kind of people you want to watch it, maybe you and I, because we study theaters in the university, but not the real crowd, the people mm -hmm. that, I mean, the people whose money yeah. you are expecting to take at the gate when you give them ticket, because you need that money to survive. I mean, if it's a commercial thing, then you need, it has to be popular, okay? It has mm -hmm. to be popular. You cannot over push elitism, mm -hmm. right? Okay, uh, which is the same thing our musicians are doing today. And, and that is why uh, the music industry 
is uh, it's it, 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 it's booming. It's um, it's grown far 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 larger than um, than the theater than the theater industry. Mm. Okay, because um, uh, those guys have um, understood the truth. What they are doing is what is popular. They don't care about your elitist uh, pontifications and comments. Yeah. Okay, and they are building their followership in leaps and bounds on daily basis. That is the kind of thing we are talking about in theater practice. That was what the Hubert Ogun days, the Drola Dikos, the Kola Ogmolas, that was what they did. Mm. Those people performed in Yoruba language, which is why we call it Yoruba popular theater. Yes. It is not as if their, their practice was limited to Yoruba land. The current dream we are having, mm. again, is not limited to Yoruba land. Okay? And that is why I'm no longer comfortable with the appellation mm. Yoruba popular. I want to see it now as Nigeria, as Nigeria popular, popular traveling popular theater job. Because what we are saying is that, yes, it started in Yoruba land because Ogunde started it in 1944. You know, but we want it to extend to other parts of Nigeria because that is one way of generating employment. Okay. And you have the audience there. Imagine how many secondary schools you have in Lagos State alone, this mm. Lagos State. If you have, if you have 200 traveling theater companies in Lagos today, each of them could perform in a secondary school yes. for the next three, four months. They keep moving around. This one comes to this school with this play. That one comes, you know, um, two days after with another play and all that. Then uh, our children will be enriched. They will learn from it. Um, learn all manners of positive things, okay? Um, they will learn about their culture, okay? Um, and other things. And uh, so apart from the companies making money, you will be exposing our children to positive uh, kind of entertainment, not the kind of things they indulge uh, in these days, especially on the social media. It is because they are bored. Okay. They are not constructively where, where, engaged in terms of entertainment. Um, professor, where, where do we draw the line between the traveling theater and live theater is itself on stage because in Nigeria, aside from the national theater, um, if you take Lagos State for example, you have the places that people go to, like the Musan Center, to stage performances. We don't have so much of theater, as in something built in the form of theater for performances. That's so correct. You have the live theater stage itself, then you have the traveling theater, which could be anywhere, marketplace, open field, you know. Um, sometimes the two try to uh, uh, fuse into one, and sometimes there is a kind of demarcation. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we properly streamline this, especially for the traveling theater? Because I know if they keep traveling, there is a better chance or opportunity for more people to have uh, their impact than when it is fixed in a particular place. Like you have the National Theater and Co. Yes. When it is fixed in a particular place, um, it, it can't thrive much. Yes. It can't thrive much. Uh, if it is fixed in a particular place, maybe you've said it yourself, National Theater in Lagos, Muso Center, where else? So, um, how many companies mm. um, will those two places cater for? And how many people will have access? Will people travel from Akure, from uh, Ilori yes. to Lagos to come and watch those performances? You know, uh, our people say that um, uh, one does not stay in one place and watch the masquerade perform. We want, we, we want to enjoy a masquerade performance, what do you do? <laughs> you, move you move around, around. with the masquerade. <laughs> so, if they want more people to have access to their performances and they really want to make money, then they have to move from one place to another. Mm -hmm. That was how the likes of Ogunde and the rest of them did it. Yes. And yes, it is a shame that in our country, we do not have enough performance spaces. Uh, in, um, I think that was 2002, 
Uh, I was on a tour or a performance tour of South Africa and Mozambique. A country as small as, as Mozambique, we performed in 18 theaters, 18, mm. 18 professionally equipped theaters. You know the size of, of, of Mozambique, <laughs> you know. But we don't have these things in Nigeria. This year, we are having that performance to bring back that memory. We are having a performance of Ojukele, the project we are actually working on now for the resuscitation of this traveling theater team mm. on June 12th. At June 12th Cultural Center, Abe Okuta. Mm. Uh, the, the Ogun State Cultural Center is called June 12th. I'm yeah. sure many people think it's because of Nadeko and all that. No, it's because it's that date. June 12, 1944 was the first time people brought out money and bought ticket to watch a performance by Hubert Ogunde. Mm. And that marked the beginning of the professional traveling theater practice in Nigeria. Mm. Now, yes, like she said, uh, later we had the television station, the first television station uh, here, um, which was started in Ibadan. And then those stage practitioners uh, were showcased, you know, on the television screen and all that. Uh, that helped them to market their trade. Some of those faces became popular on television. And that was why people watched their performances when they brought their performances to the live, you know, uh, the theater, stage. Uh, theater stage, you know, around them. Okay, ah, that's the man, that man will be watching on television. I'm going to watch him live. Now, the same relationship is what we expect to happen today. Okay. The lives of Dele Odule, okay, my collaborator in this thing, uh, whose faces are prominent on the screens, can then use that to market their live theater uh, performances. Uh, we are not pushing for a complete abandonment of the screen practice. No, that's not what we're talking about. But what we're saying, like, yeah, I mean, what we're saying is that the two should, you know, be in existence, hmm. okay? That will create more jobs for the practitioners. That will bring more jobs to the industry, okay? And that will uh, constructively, you know, uh, create a, um, entertainment for the Timmy population of Nigerians, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, that is what is happening in other countries. Yes. Every other is country. Is what the of Minister the, of uh, um, Information and Culture wants? Uh -huh. so yes. Every ability other country to create more of, jobs exactly. using creativity. Every other country of, of, of the world, when you go into the theaters, you see live performances happening. You see the place, I mean, the, the theater halls filled up. Mm. The same thing, that same hour, if you go into a cinema, you see the cinema hall mm. filled to the brim. That, so there's always something going okay. on All right. somewhere. Let's take comments, questions, and contributions. Okay. Why the live theater draws on the imagination of the audience to um, pass across this message? Don't you think that we'll be demanding too much from the youth of nowadays? It's very easy to bring out a phone and get to entertainment. It's very easy to log on to YouTube and watch entertainment. Now you're asking them, leave the comfort of your house. Leave the comfort of your home and come and watch these performances. Apart from that, I also want to raise the issue on it, of it bringing employment, an alternative means of employment to the young graduates. Don't you think it would be too demanding in cost, putting up a live theater performance? Talking about... Um the younger generation leaving the comfort of their homes and their phones and their laptops and their tablets to come to the theater. You see, the two experiences are not the same. Hmm. You cannot get the experience we are talking about. Yeah. To start with, when you pick your phone or your laptop, you are alone. Or maybe one or two of your friends are there. And you watch that thing. For how long? You cannot watch a, a play, a full play of one hour on your, on your phone or your laptop. You know, and how many of you are there? But when you get to the theater, there were people who are coming into 
the theater to watch performances. Not even because of the shows, but because of the other people that they will sit with. It's like today, people go to the viewing centers to watch football matches. Some of those people have their TV in their homes. They can watch at home. But it is not the same feeling. They want the company of those other people there. They shout together. They cheer together. They, they want to socialize. Argue. They want to socialize. Okay? You cannot have that on your palm with your phone. That is number one. Then number two, the social media thing um, doesn't even help you to select what to watch. Everything comes to it. Are you getting it? The ones that are good for you, the ones that are good, good for your system, and the ones that are not, they all come to your phone. And once they come there and, and you waiting with this, you ping, you, you punch, you start watching it. So you are forced to watch what you don't want to watch sometimes. Right? But you have the power to choose what you want to watch and what you do not want to watch. If it is live theater performance on stage, you see the poster, you hear the radio advert. Is that the kind of play I want to watch? Or is that not the kind of play I want to watch? You can choose. So you have various you know, advantages of this over um, you know, what you can get through the social media. Secondly, talking about movie night. Yes, yes you have to move like And uh, what I'm talking about is not, is not I'm not, not pontificating theory. I'm not here talking as a professor. I'm talking as a grassroots practitioner. I've done this thing for decades myself. Right? Before coming out to now say yes. This will work if we bring it back. And I will share with you some of the things I've done. In the 90s, um, I was teaching drama and theater at ABU Zaria, above, um, Amadou Bello University, uh, Zaria, um, between 1992 and 1996. And we formed a troupe. About four of us who were colleagues in the department, we picked about three or four of our students. We picked scripts like the Trials of Brajero, how many, mm. how many characters? Not Trials much. of Brajero. Mm. What do you need in terms of costume and makeup? You okay? And two of us had cars. And so we just shared about nine people uh, into two cars. We journeyed around all the secondary schools in Kaduna State. As a university teacher, the four of us who were, who were workers, who were lecturers in the department at that time, two of them now, um, Professor Sam Kafewo and uh, Jens Okori, uh, or blessed uh, memory, you know. Um, the fourth of us uh, uh, is now the University of uh, Calabar, uh, Idegu, you know, Idegu, a playwright. Uh, we didn't touch our salaries for four months. We didn't know whether university was paying salary. Okay? Because we were making money from what we were doing and we were paying students that were on that project with us. And let me tell you what we just did. We just focused our attention on secondary schools alone. We were traveling from one secondary school to another for months. We finished lecture, two o'clock, three o'clock, we go into the car and travel to the next, the town where we we're performing that day. Mm. Have two shows in that school and come back to Zaria and do our lectures the following morning, get into our cars and moved. Okay? What we were doing was a research, really. It was a research. We wanted to know whether, because what I'm talking about today, the discussion, arguments, okay, started a long time ago. We made sure that uh, if we come back and preach this model, it's going to work because we've practically worked on it and we saw it work. Hmm. What we were doing there could have been done by some of the theater graduates looking for a job on the streets of Kaduna or on the streets of Zaria. And that option was there. That opportunity was there. They couldn't do it. They didn't do it. And they were looking for jobs. And yet, we, we went around with that. We went around with the trials of Brajero for secondary schools. I also wanted to ask, will we be dwelling on the Yoruba language as a means of communication or English language as the lingua franca or what are we going to use? No, then, now. The kind of entertainment is you know, to also create for people who are not within the conference of Africa or Nigeria. Yes. The traveling theater of today, of course, will not 
follow exactly uh, the the templates that okay. um, of what the kinds of Ogunde and the rest of them, uh, you know, did. Of course, uh, there must be continuities and discontinuities. Mm. Uh, one of the discontinuities will have to to be at the level of language. Like I said earlier on, it was called Yoruba Traveling Theater because the language was Yoruba. Yeah. So like I said, uh, we are not talking of Yoruba Popular Traveling Theater again. We are talking about Nigerian Popular Traveling Theater. Uh, so which means uh, the performances will be in the languages spoken and understood by the target audience. Hmm. It will depend on the environment where the plays were being taken to for performances, hmm. okay? Uh, and, 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 and so uh, you pick the language of communication hmm. uh, uh, from that. Uh, who are we performing for? And secondly, uh, there is a possibility of international collaborations, like what is talking. I mean, talking yeah. about. But what would determine that is the availability of funds. If you are bringing collaborators from outside the country, then you have to think of how commercially viable is going to be. Because what we are talking about is not just art for art's sake. We are talking about a business. It's business. And so, if you have sponsorships, because again, that is going to be part of these discontinuities. Yeah. In those days, the Hubert Ogun days relied solely on what they made from the gates. Yes. Now, the, 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 the box office is no longer at the gate. We must find other... It's beyond the gate. It's now. beyond the gate. <laughs> we must find other sophisticated <laughs> means of selling your tickets and, and all that. Okay. And you must find other ways of generating funds for what you are doing. So unlike Cuba, the good and Kola Ogumala, you will not restrict your capacity to make money through your performances to what people can buy at the gate as tickets. Mm -hmm. You also must look for sponsorship. Is it possible, for instance, as an example, that midway into the play, you create a five-minute window for adverts of products so that companies can give you money mm -hmm. that in between, I mean, midway into your stage performance, mm -hmm. you have a break, okay? Like uh, the, the Italians will call uh, intermezzi and the rest of them, yeah. you know, in those days, interlude. And during this interlude, it's not just uh, musical uh, performances to entertain people, you know, or drink tea and coffee, like the theaters of the olden days. No, what you are doing is to have tie-in adverts, okay, of four, five, six companies who are supporting this your tour or this your production, you know, financially, and then you advert advertise their products on your stage to your audience. Do you understand? So we will have to be that dynamic and contemporary in our thinking mm. so that uh, what we are talking about becomes uh, not just artistically viable, viable, but also commercially viable mm. because it is the commercial viability that will sustain the movement. Okay. So commercial viability must sustain the movement. Mm. That is part of the resuscitation in this 21st century. Exactly. Because oh, okay. when people see it as job and see it as something that can bring bread and butter to their table, they will continue to practice it. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor Bakker. Thank, Thank, <laughs> Thank you. So good to have you. Oh, okay. And to our viewers at home, thank you so very much for staying with us. Join us on another edition of Third Eye. I'm Ozio Bye-bye for now. <laughs>